right. Hello and good afternoon and welcome everyone to this afternoon's session on um, music in musical heritage of the Kathmandu Valley. My name is Amina Yakin. I'm the director of the SOAS Festival of Ideas. The festival theme this year is on, um, it's our inaugural fe festival, it's our first festival and um, we are um, dedicating this festival to the theme of decolonizing knowledge. Decolonization, decolonizing means a lot of things to in, in a lot of situations and contexts and um, therefore we are not assuming that everybody agrees on this particular um, definition and indeed we would welcome contribution from participants in all our panels with regards to what what they think this means to them. Um, with regards to our particular initiative, we want to include a wider in, um, knowledge of Africa and Asia in the teaching and the research that we do. This is a research led festival and we are celebrating the work of our researchers and our collaborators and partners in the Global South with whom we work to um, make so as the kind of institution it is and the kind of work that we do. Uh, so I hope that uh, you will take a moment to look at our overall program, which is a range of panel discussions, masterclasses and um, uh, book talks as well as many more things. We have a debate on Saturday and a play as well. So please do tune in if you can. But this afternoon you're in for a real treat. I am uh, personally looking forward to this afternoon's session. Um, it is with my um, colleague um, who I have had the opportunity and um, great um, I think um, experience of getting to to know him in in at SOAS in the Department of Music and to learn from him. Uh, Richard Bude Professor Richard Budes has been researching the musical traditions of South Asia at SOAS for over forty years, <clears throat> and um, the other collaborator in this um, afternoon session is Chouette Films. I've also had a chance to get to know. Um, the team in Chouette Films as well and uh, this particular uh, afternoon session is a celebration of the ongoing collaboration between Richard's work and Chouette Films and the heritage of um, Nepal and the local community uh, music traditions and Chouette Films is a small company based at SOAS. They specialize in ethical and environmentally friendly documentaries on social issues. So ethics is, is the word that we were, we are very much in tune with in decolonizing knowledge because that's a very important part of how we connect with heritage and the heritage of music in South Asia. And I am delighted this afternoon that we are joined by um, <clears throat> um, Shashi Amatya from um, the um, uh, apologies, Shashi, uh, uh, Shashi Chandra Amatya from the who is from the Mathina uh, Foundation, General Secretary at the Mathina Foundation, and he's a chief editor of Mathina Magazine and World Never Organization and advisor to the Pasapuchaguti UK. Apologies if I'm getting my pronunciations wrong. His place of birth is Kathmandu and um, he's currently living in the UK and is um, <clears throat> here to be part of this particular festival and will speak and say a few words about the musical heritage of the Kathmandu value. So can I, um, Shashi, 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 welcome to the session. Thank you for joining us and I'll hand over to you. Can you hear me? What's up? Good afternoon. <clears throat> Can you see me? Uh, no, we can't see you, Shashi. I'll mute myself. Yeah. Can you see me now? Yes, we can see you now. Yeah. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Sashi Amate. Um, 
I'd like to thank you all to, for giving me this opportunity. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, I'm the General Secretary of Matina Foundation, uh, which is based in London. And the objective of Matina Foundation is to preserve and promote the language and culture of Nyawa people. Uh, as an organization, we have started off publishing Matina, a Nyawa socio-cultural magazine. Uh, we are organizing Ihi, an important ritual of young female <clears throat> in a year or two, depending upon the number of participants. Uh, and biannual literary event to commemorate our heroes. I'm not a musician, but as a Newa, I used to wake up every morning with hymn singings in the area. We used to have falchas, uh, it's a kind of rest house. Um, and uh, those falchas are almost everywhere, uh, other corner of the streets uh, in Kathmandu where locals sing hymns every morning. Besides this, even at home, ringing a traditional bell and blowing a shanka, that is conch, with bhajan early morning is a common practice in every household. So our daily routine starts with worshiping deities, playing music, uh, singing hymns in the temples. And Kathmandu Valley uh, and the 12 districts of current Nepal were under Nepal Mandal, Nepal in short. The people of this area were called Newa, a Newar in derogative term. Their language is called Nepal Bhasa, also known as Newa Bhai or Newari in derogative term again. Unlike other ethnic groups of Nepal, Newa are the groups of different castes with different religions, mainly Hindus and Buddhists, sharing the same language and same culture. They celebrate all festivals together with many minor variations. Uh, Newa shrines, whether it be Buddhist or Hindu, uh, wouldn't be complete without a falsa, a rest house, to play music and to sing hymns, where they, uh, they also use these rest houses for other religious activities. And Newa people are always busy celebrating festivals throughout the year. Uh, we have festivals almost every two weeks and all these festivals uh, are not complete without the music. The different festivals are devoted to the different deities and there is different music to play in different uh, celebrations. Even musical instruments will be different. In the meantime, different castes play different musical instruments in different occasions, like uh, Sake, Bajrasare and Udaya, Udaya, that is Tuladar, Tamrakar. They play Gula Bajan, and even uh, some, some Mananders also play Gula Baza. Uh, Naki uh, played by butchers. And the Dapa group consists of different castes, uh, mainly farmers. And now people have Guthis, that is Guthi, Guthi is a trust to protect the cultural activities, including music. Uh, most of the traditional music are related to the devotional songs. However, there are other genres too, like uh, Rajamati Kumati is uh, the oldest love song of Nepal. This song is almost 200 years old and it is still popular. An interesting event about this love song that it was played as a national anthem of Nepal in London during the visit of Rana Prime Minister Janga Bahadur, and that was in 1850. And similarly, uh, there is a popular uh, ballet in Nepali, Munamadan, that is called Munamadan, and that is also based on a popular uh, Newa song, Newa love song. But uh, later, uh, 
ne Nepal Basa, Newa language, and uh, Newa music started to uh, die uh, on the rise of Saha and Rala, Rana rulers. And Prithvi Narayan Saha destroyed the hundreds of Nepal Basa manuscripts. And Rana regime, they banned Nepal Basa from official use. Mahendra, Mahendra Saha stopped teaching Nepal Basa in his schools. However, some Dafa colors survived. Till today, they are uh, musicians, they are musical groups. They survived till today because of Guthi's trusts. Nepalese media corporations like Radio Nepal, Nepal Television, they never gave any space during Panchayat regime. It is only after democracy in the uh, 90s, they gave a little space to the Newa music, language, and culture. The only government-owned Nepal Film Corporation, they never spent any penny on Newa music, Newa movies, etc. cetera. Uh, Newa traditional music is dying fast due to the lack of government initiation. There is no government assistance, and there is no any government policy to save the heritage. So uh, young people, they do not see their future and they are, not, they are attracted to the other opportunities. They also like to move to the foreign countries. However, new emerging technologies, technologies are making music lovers to involve in their project. Uh, there are a few groups like Project Baza, Nepal, who are trying to revive traditional music. The most positive side of preserving traditional music is the participation of females. Nowadays, many women are learning traditional instruments. However, all efforts of preserving and promoting Newa music are happening only uh, from the private sector with their own resources. And this may not be sustainable in long run for any group without the involvement of government. Uh, that's all I can say. Uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity. Thank you. Back to you. Hello. Hello and welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Shashi, for that introduction to the general subject of Newa music. My name is Richard Woodis. Um, I've been working with musicians in the Kathmandu Valley since about 1990. But uh, last year, September 2019, I had the novel experience for me of uh, visiting uh, the Valley with uh, Anna and Remy Sova of Chouette Films um, with a view to experimenting with uh, film technology um, for documenting the Noir traditional music, including uh, virtual reality uh, filming as well as conventional film. We enjoyed the support of Kathmandu University Music Department through its director, Lord Chun Rajal, and the very valuable assistance of Shamsha Pradhan in Bhaktapur, and subsequently of Shashi Amatya in London, who helped us with the subtitles. And we're very grateful to SOAS uh, for funding for this project from their Seed Corp Fund. The films we show today uh, may or may not appear in very high quality um, on your screens, depending on internet speeds at both ends. Um, but I've put into the chat uh, links to the videos online, so uh, please watch them again afterwards, um, especially if you haven't uh, ha seen them in very high quality because the films have extremely high quality definition and sound, so we do want you to enjoy them uh, at their best. So please do go and um, uh, look them up again at your leisure. If you have any comments or questions, please um, use the Q&A 
function um, rather than the chat. If you'd like, just like to say hello as, and, and hello to those who have already done so, um, uh, by all means use the chat. But if you actually would like to ask a question or make a comment that you'd like us to discuss, um, then please use the Q and A button at the bottom of the Zoom screen. And if there's time, um, we would like to discuss any questions that you raise um, at the end. I'm going to show a short PowerPoint presentation first to uh, continue setting the scene, as uh, Shashi Amatya has already uh, begun to do, uh, for the films and introduce some of the issues they raise, which again uh, Shashi has already uh, introduced in some cases. So I'm going to share my screen and start my PowerPoint presentation. So um, what I'm going to do is briefly introduce uh, the musical heritage of the Kathmandu Valley, say a few words about the theme of this uh, festival, decolonization, in relation to documentation. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the virtual reality technology in relation to filming musical heritage, and I'll try to show you uh, a short example of that. Uh, I hope that the technology permits. Uh, we'll then go to the main film, which I will introduce briefly, uh, Gulas Music for a Sacred Time, which is a, a selection of the material that we filmed uh, during our two-week stay in the Kathmandu Valley last year. And then after the film, uh, the producer, Anna Sova, will give us some reflections on filming musical heritage. So, uh, brief uh, introduction to musical heritage of the Kathmandu Valley. Kathmandu uh, uh, is the capital of Nepal, and uh, I've worked mainly in the city of Bhaktapur, which is about 10 miles uh, outside the capital. It's a very historic city um, with splendid uh, architecture, temples, and uh, the uh, uh, former royal palace um, and the uh, majority population uh, belong indeed to the uh, Newar ethnic group uh, which uh, uh, Shashi has mentioned who speak the language Newari or, or Nepal Bhasha. Uh, there are two religions, uh, Hinduism and Buddhism, very closely interconnected. And um, society is much divided into different social groups, uh, different castes, uh, different occupations, different neighbourhood communities, and of course two genders. And these are factors that uh, music articulates and um, expresses. Um, musical heritage in Bhaktapur goes back many centuries to the uh, elite courts of local rulers, as we can see from historic paintings and documents. But today um, it is largely practiced by the farmers of Bhaktapur, who have preserved many traditions that would formerly have been performed in the palaces of the Newar kings. Another musical community uh, is the Buddhist community, uh, a minority in, in Bhaktapur, um, but they um, use music in particular to celebrate uh, the season of Guna, which was the season while, uh, that, uh, that we were there in Bhaktapur last year, um, which is a, a devotional and auspicious season. Um, but in general, 
um, the many hundreds of different music groups in Bhaktapur and other towns and villages of the Kathmandu Valley. Uh, they share some uh, common features, uh, one of which is that it's almost always a group activity, not a, a solo uh, activity. And for most people, not a professional uh, activity. Um, it is a participatory tradition. Um, people sing and play for their own pleasure and enjoyment and to express uh, devotion to the gods. Um, and only secondarily, if at all, uh, for the enjoyment of a, a, an audience. Thinking about decolonization in this uh, context um, is uh, slightly a challenge because, of course, Nepal has never been a colony. Um, uh, and in that uh, respect, it contrasts very interestingly with, for example, India uh, next door with its long colonial experience. But of course the decolonization agenda is about decolonizing ourselves and our approach to studying our disciplines, in my case musicology. It's about recognizing, valuing and seeking to understand different knowledge systems. And music is a knowledge system, albeit usually transmitted through practice rather than through language or writing. The discipline of ethnomusicology, which we pursue at SOAS, is about understanding different musical systems and how they're integrated with other cultural systems and processes, and how individuals and communities experience their own music. So SOAS has for several decades now been at the forefront of decentering the Western classical music repertoire and approaches to studying it, which predominantly constitute the discipline of musicology in Western academia. Um, in this respect, we, we share a lot with our uh, filmmaker friends at uh, Chouette Films because we are equally concerned to facilitate communities in telling their own stories rather than imposing our own preconceptions. And Anna will have something to say about this later, I think. An important factor here, as uh, Shashi Amatya has mentioned, is that many music traditions in the Kathmandu Valley, uh, as elsewhere, are in endangered. Uh, many Newars, like uh, Shashi, are concerned at the decline of musical traditions and the risk of their imminent disappearance. This has many causes, including so social and economic changes uh, in Bhaktapur, the gradual population shift to Kathmandu, for example, but also natural disasters do not help. Earthquakes uh, such as the uh, massive earthquake in 2015 and, uh, I'm sorry to say, the current pandemic. Consequently, documentation, I think, is increasingly important for curating heritage for future understanding, for supporting communities in valuing their own heritage, and researching the history of that heritage. VR filming is a technique that Chouette Films are developing for documentation of cultural heritage. A VR camera is placed in the centre of a space and captures everything around it, all sides, above and below. And um, uh, Chouette Films had already used this technique in the Multimedia Yasna project on Zoroastrian ritual led by Saras Professor Almut Hintzer. We wanted to try it out in Bhaktapur for various reasons. Music groups there tend to face inwards towards the centre of the group and this is difficult to film from outside the circle. Um, so uh, a, a, another advantage is, um, and this ties in very much with the decolonization theme, uh, VR allows the viewer to select what to look at. It decenters the filmmaker. You can watch many times with different focus each time. The 360 degree view also captures what is going on around the musical performance, the context. 
uh, including both the social and the physical environment. And finally, when viewed with a VR headset, which is the ideal way of, of watching a VR film, it gives a very vivid sense of being present in the event. So our VR uh, example uh, features the DAFA group. DAFA is a style of group devotional singing performed by men of the farmer and other social groups. Um, it's sung by two equal groups of singers sitting opposite each other, singing alternately and playing cymbals and accompanied by drums. Our VR film shows the Dafar group of the Chandeshwari temple in Bhaktapur, who sing every morning at 4.30 for a couple of hours before going to work. I'll play a short example of a Dafar song, or part of it, uh, focusing initially on the musicians, looking right and left uh, as the two groups of singers sing alternately. I'll then play that again, but turn round through 180 degrees to look at what's happening in the wider context. People on their way to work, calling in at the local temple, uh, blessing the crossroads with uh, small offerings and so on. So, technology permitting, I will uh, now attempt to show a little bit of VR documentation. So I'll just have to reopen the file. Bear with me. Oh. Let's also close the application. One more, please. service will be resumed in a moment. Um, So, um, I will attempt to share my screen again. Sorry that um, Zoom is not allowing the um, video to move. Uh, hopefully you might be hearing a bit of the sound, um, but I can probably rotate the picture at least to show the whole group of musicians, the two groups of singers with the um, drum players in the middle. But the great advantage uh, well, one of the advantages, as I said, of VR is that you can look all around and see the context. Um, here is the temple of Chandeshuri, uh, for whom 
these singers sing every day. Here we have passers-by, these ladies wearing um, a traditional Newa dress um, are uh, 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 visiting the temple to say their morning prayers and to make a small offering at the crossroads, uh, which is at the centre of their neighbourhood community. And here's somebody on the way to work. This platform is one of the many Fultzas that Shashi, Shashi mentioned uh, as uh, places, platforms, covered platforms, where music groups can gather to sing and play. So I'm sorry the um, uh, VR film didn't work, but please look it up on uh, the internet via the link that I've given. And um, uh, you all may also need to download the GoPro VR viewer in order to see it in uh, its full glory. So um, I'll go back to my PowerPoint uh, very briefly to introduce the main film. So um, the first part of the film uh, focuses on a Dafa group, a different Dafa group that's associated with the temple of Dr. Treya, one of the largest and oldest temples in Bhaktapur. This group meet every day of the year, 365 days of the year, um, um, barring emergencies uh, such as coronavirus pandemic. Uh, and the uh, second part of the film focuses on the festival of Panchadan and uh, the um, uh, Gulan Baja musical genre. This is a, a, a festival in which five Buddha statues are carried through the streets of Bhaktapur and they're accompanied by music groups of various kinds, uh, including the uh, Gulan Baja. Uh, uh, drum uh, and wind uh, ensemble. This is uh, pl music played by members of the Buddha community, including, as you will see, um, children and young people. Um, uh, and we, so we interviewed uh, one of the young people, um, and uh, this is included in the film. Similarly, we interviewed the leader of the Dafa group, Panchala. Um, and uh, I hope you will enjoy hearing from them their view of their own traditions. And then just at the very end of the film you get a glimpse of the Tij festival which happens also at about that time of year, in September or so. Um, and uh, this is a festival celebrated by women of the Brahmin caste from Kathmandu who come to Bhaktapur uh, to celebrate the festival and they fast for the entire day um, uh, to uh, ensure the long life of their husbands. Uh, so this is in fact the only day of the year in which uh, uh, respectable ladies would be allowed to dance and sing in public in this way. Um, and it's interesting that traditionally they would sing songs in praise of the god Shiva um, on behalf of their husbands. But since the mid 20th century, the songs have included increasingly um, social commentary and political protest. So there's clearly uh, an interesting story uh, to be told about music and society there. 
So um, I'll turn to the main film, uh, and after we've seen the film, Anna uh, will be here to share some reflections on her objectives in making it and uh, her experience in doing so. Na <laughs> Da 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 Mutitaya, she sent to me, I was a good Titan, I got that out of a new tatia bow, the Gatio Gadiuba. Tandrika Taka 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 Tandrika 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 Taka अरे बाबी सांग मैं मैं कुछ गुरुते सांग जिधर कौन जीवन है सारे हाँ जिधर बांसे वो मनुष्य जो तो ना तो ये जो मजो तो ये जो मजो आह था सुया था कली पिंडा था जो किस में यार सन्मान ये माँ था सुया को वाली पिंडा था जो किस में माया ये माँ आह वो मैं तहता तो मैं के तहता तो सोने वो डाटा का दाऊ का � उपयुक्त हो गया तो कि पासात दाउ जो चोट ना अगेन जिरा तो मैं आले उड़ है वो खाता ताक 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 वो बुली करने मुआना तीन ना तीन तां तीन तां तीन तां दर के ताक तां अरे तीन तां तीन क्या बोले तां दर के ताक तां क्या बोले तां क्या बोले सब खिला रहे ये खिला रहे अरे वो यार आ ची आह दफाय वाला जो उसने पर्व काले ची है ना आह नौ बजे है थांस उसने अरे मिमी फुम मुंटे से ना अरे जीव प्रति प्रति जा बाल ना का स्वयं वो भावना तो अरे जो ने इधर आत्मा नहीं है चिता खुशी जो है ना चिता तो दफा ले उठाओ तो पसंद ये उठाओ खाता मामला उमको तो तो भगवान प्रति अरे जो स्वस्थ रहने बालना हुए जा खोट है खाता मती तो यार जी नूलन ही है भाव तो यार तो आता जो आटकों आटकों या अनुमान स्वीप ले अच्छे से सात बरस तो था नहीं सी जिसमें मेरे वहाँ जी पढ़ने वाले वो बने वहाँ सात बरस जिसी है आठगन जो आठगन हैं मिले तो पसंद बनना चाहिए ना बाप शिंगा है वो 
เอ่อเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวกันได้ดิ่งกันได้ใจอ่ะว่าถ้าที่ได้ทุลิบเอ่อไปได้ได้ได้ชูอ่ะทั่วปัจเนวงก็ที่
Mitana Gulab was a poly arcade, Doku, Misata Mizanto, there was a new skill to call I of Yokumahato Day. I live Misatisa Yoko Tafe, Mokumizan, this is a very good Tafe at the Mokoki, this is a talent Konguli, may not have a Tafata Uli Balaika. I live to Misa Mizanya, busy to know at the uncomfortable feel things in Moku. जब दाग को थावे सामुआ कहतों सीखे आज जोनी तो ये आज डिफरेंसेस तय फील जी माहूर दाग को इक्वले फील जी गुलाब बाजा तय हो जो थाव म्यूजिक का जो नापा नापा निश्चय बाजा बारा जुपिंग ये पाले निश्चय से कोताय हो जो थो थाव कल्चर ना खा अलेट थाव टैलेंट ना खा हाँ ना गुलाब आजाद के जी म्यूजिक जगह सीखे हम खुद जी लाइफ या बारे ना यो को ज्ञान गुनिया कुरा तो सीखे हैं फिर जिसे तो गुलाब आजाद सीखे हो दायो आ अथवा सीख लो कने लुवां लुवां क्लो आते जगह मखो की न्याबलिंग तो तो सीख कते माली पाली पाता कनो जिता या या जुई तो अलेज जिसे था ना गुलाब आजाद जी तो तो टीम जो का मकसद है तो परिवार थी ये खा अलेज जी पुदाको मिले मिले जो गुली बाला को बाजो था ये जीता जीता उली ये को आपूत है मस्से वही गुलाब आजाद से क्यों जो नापा निशियाँ वो कल्चर जला नापा जी मावू बाले निशी बाजार पे निपाले या निशी तो कल्चर जो नहीं जी अथो जेनरेशन या यूथ ऐसा तो कल्चर टापी जो भी आते हैं माँ दाकुसी के तो कल्चर या बारे दाकुसी ना सी से के माँ याको बर्सो लिपा जैसा आठो बाजा और और साले जो सों दाले लिपा बिशे जो वानी आठे जैसा सही जो तो आईडेंटिटी जो लोग जो वानी अले आठे मजे का आठो बाजा और घर में बाला का संसालन जो सों दा लिपा या बर्से ना आठे संसालन जो यंतु तो निमा Yeah.
Welcome back, and I hope that uh, you were able to enjoy that film. Um, may I remind you uh, to put any questions you would like to put to us in the um, Q&A, um, and of course any comments uh, if are welcome in the chat as well. So now we go over to the producer of that film, Anna Silva. Her husband, Remy Silva, was the uh, uh, editor. And um, uh, Anna, if you're there, um, please join us. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for um, inviting me this afternoon and for taking the time to watch the film and wonderful comments that everyone is leaving now. Um, so as you have seen in the film, Nepal is a filmmaker's dream stunning landscapes of the fire with diversity of colors, people and cultures. You can see easily how a place of such beauty, character and interest can easily be drawn into the, um, one would say, exoticized picture. Um, throughout our work at Thread Films, we learn that people have different experiences of the camera. Whereas in the UK and many other parts of the world, most people might have experience being filmed or filming others, we have to stop ourselves from making any assumptions about the relationship that other cultures might have with relationship to, in their relationship with, with um, film and photography. As a film crew in Nepal, we have to keep in mind that we have no knowledge of the kind of images, moving or still, that an individual in Nepal might have been exposed to in relation to their own culture or themselves. We have to be aware that anyone we approach for filming might have been able to feel exoticized or excluded by images in the past. Film has a long history of taking advantage of people. It is a compelling tool, but it is also susceptible to misrepresentation and effective in manipulating the truth to spice up the narrative. It is all too easy to overlook the importance of involving the people you are filming in the project and find yourself treating them as objects rather than subjects of the documentary. Many people who have been the subjects of film around the world might have never been shown the work or pay the royalties. So at the core of all this is the question, who really benefits from the entire endeavor from the filmmaking project? Whom is the film seeking to please? Who are the real beneficiaries? Is it the commissioner or is it the social actors whose voices the film strives to make heard? It is certain that um, filmmakers, the ones behind the camera, unfortunately often benefit significantly more than those in front of it. This is the tragic original sin of documentary. And to avoid falling into the same exploitative pattern, we try to let the social actors lead the narrative of the documentary. So instead of arriving with a preconceived idea of what we want to do or what we want the film to say, we begin by asking questions. So going to Nepal with Richard was a great privilege for us. As an initial trip, the main agenda was simply to meet the people, hear the music and find out what is it that they would like to tell us about their music? What is it that they would like to tell us about the 
the role the music plays in the community. We did not come to the community as strangers, just the opposite. Our relationship with them was based on Rich's 30 years of experience and research in the town. We were working pro bono on a trip that would be a start of a great conversation and a collaboration. And on the first night that we arrived, we were welcomed by a special mention of us to the gods in the Dafai ritual. We were given flower necklaces and a bindi, which is the, um, the Hindu dot we wear on the forehead. And naturally, all of this was followed by a great festive meal. Um, we believe that developing a genuine and a positive relationship with contributors is crucial to creating a successful and a meaningful documentary. So we were absolutely thrilled to share many pots of tea, many meals and many chats with members of the community throughout our chat, throughout our time there. And the trip would have never been the same, the whole project would have never been the same without the experience of going there. And obviously the exciting outcomes wouldn't be, wouldn't be this stunning. So as filmmakers, we usually ask ourselves the same three questions in relation to documentary, that is, who is your audience? What are you trying to say? In other words, why is it important? And what would you like people to think, do or feel um, after watching the film? But in this case, um, it is not only our opinion that matters. Our role is to ensure that everyone involved in the project is welcome to participate freely and equally. In practice, this means that we do our best to give voice to people who might not otherwise have the opportunity to speak out. For example, young women or people living in isolated communities. We wanted to make sure that the community was equally involved in the planning and truly happy and committed to the project. Together, we have considered countless questions such as who is allowed to speak in the film? Who is allowed to be represented? How are people represented? what we should film and how, and what languages we should use. So through discussions, meals and spending time as a group, together we identified aspects of life that mattered most to the community in relation to music. For the community, music is about maintaining a relationship with the gods, expressing social identity and enjoying the psychological benefits of group participation. The community members interviewed each other with self-written questions developed around some suggestions and areas of particular interest from us. And we sought the community's feedback at every stage. For example, we have run a number of recording sessions, each with a different setup of microphones and then gathered feedback from the musicians as to which setup variation captured the sound in a way that represented the music they best. Um, also, on the day of the Panjadan festival, we asked to enter different houses to film the procession from different angles. This gave us a, an amazing and fully flavored, rounded understanding of the celebration. And there's no way we would have accessed those perspectives without the help of the community. So you might ask a question, why should we bother to organize so much time for conversations and questions? What's the advantage of trying all these interviews and feedback sessions? Well, I would say that thanks to this trip, we had a much rich intellectual understanding um, of the issues at stake and a much closer cultural understanding of the subjects. Together with the community, we have come up with more examples and more case studies that we could potentially draw on from. And we hope and believe that this collaborating and learning experience is hugely enriching for everyone involved. Broaching the big ethical issues of exploitation, inequality and misrepresentation in filmmaking is vital to creating a meaningful film which is positive for everyone involved. And we are learning a lot from the whole process. We're making ourselves reflect more on our own ways of working as well as strengthening our critical thinking and our readiness to open up to conversations. This project is providing a great opportunity for us to keep broadening our frames of reference, challenge the assumptions and include a more diverse range of people in our work at Shred Films. 
filmmakers have responsibility for their films, for the films that they make. And we need to live up to this. We need to not only protect our contributors, but also ensure that they benefit from the whole process in an in a equal matter. So that's probably all I wanted to say this afternoon. If you have any questions, please feel free um, to type them. But I think I'll pass on to Richard at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Anna, um, for those very, very interesting uh, remarks. Um, we now come to the final and uh, completely unplanned uh, section of this presentation because this is where we discuss any uh, questions uh, of, um, that you have raised in the Q&A. Um, I'm just looking at, uh, at the questions now and um, there are a number of them. Um, there's a very interesting and perhaps problematic uh, question about the internal colonization uh, within Nepal and uh, of course this is um, a, 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 a very big factor in the history of Nepal um, as I'm sure many of you know. Um, the Kathmandu Valley used to be um, uh, divided into three independent Newa kingdoms, um, but these were uh, conquered and absorbed into um, a very wider empire um, of um, the um, originally uh, Gorkali uh, king in 1768 to 9. And since then, uh, Kathmandu has been the capital of a, a much larger area, the, the country that we now know as Nepal. Um, so there are um, many different communities involved in this uh, much larger uh, political unit now. Um, and certainly in the past, um, the Newars um, found themselves to be an oppressed uh, community within the valley that they used to rule. Um, that is, um, I hope, no longer perceived to be the case, but it's certainly a big factor in the history of the valley. Um, for example, and this is where music comes into the picture, um, in the past, farmers uh, in Park Tukpur were not allowed to be literate. The only education that they were allowed to have was Dafa and other musical genres. Um, so uh, music has played a very large part in the uh, culture and identity of uh, some of the uh, communities in Park Topo for um, uh, many, many uh, centuries. Um, but um, Shashi, I don't know if you would like to come back in on this and um, uh, consider how, how uh, outside observers like uh, uh, myself and uh, um, filmmakers like uh, uh, Chouette Films might um, uh, deal with such issues, uh, since we are not internal to the situation ourselves. If you're there, Shashi, uh, perhaps uh, you'd like to turn your microphone on and... Uh, sorry, uh, Richard, I, I didn't get the uh, question, sorry. <laughs> right, um, the, the, the question, uh, just to summarise, is that uh, while some uh, don't consider non-colonial non-settler colonialism to be colonialism um, and some may not view the indigenous populations of Nepal as having been colonized. Nepal has had a history of oppression of its indigenous minority communities including laws that made the Newa language illegal. How are you dealing with this legacy of oppression when working with Newa musicians? Um, well, you've already referred, uh, Shashi, to the, the uh, problems of uh, maintaining the Newa language. Um, do, is there anything else you would like to say about this? 
Yes. Uh, yeah, we faced a lot of uh, we faced a lot of challenges uh, uh, during the Panchayat regime and Rana regime. Uh, however, uh, however, it is uh, a bit relaxed and uh, we can enjoy. But uh, in the meantime, uh, there are not enough resources. I had mentioned earlier as well, the whatever uh, we are doing is all from our own resources and which uh, is not enough to uh, support our activities. And in Nepal, uh, uh, Richard, uh, you already know that uh, Newa culture is the most advanced culture, rich culture and the Newa language uh, it has got all sorts of um, literary uh, uh, literatures and uh, also in the meantime uh, Newa music is also uh, uh, advanced music in Nepal but uh, uh, from the um, during the panchayat system even though there were lots of Newa musicians, uh, popular musicians, they were never encouraged to play in their, play their music, uh, play their songs. So yeah, but now uh, because of democracy, uh, we are doing a bit better than before, but it is not enough. And uh, uh, the main thing is the language that is still we are not uh, being able to use our languages language in uh, admi in administration, so that is the main thing that uh, it pushes us back uh, behind uh, from the other people, uh, especially from the Brahman and um, Baun and Chetris, because uh, the language, uh, the official language in Nepal, is their language, is not our language, so we are not competent to them. So we don't get the proper uh, job. We don't get the government job. That mean, I mean, we don't have access because the um, to get into the uh, government job, you must be competent in Nepali language. So yeah, these things uh, is still we are facing. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, um, Shashi, um, for that that comment i think as uh, 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 outsiders to the culture ourselves it, we we have to respect the history uh, but also respect the diversity of culture in nepal this is a source of great richness of course um, and to know our culture and music are not the only culture of music um, worth examining in, in Nepal. Uh, it's a question of helping all um, communities perhaps to value their own culture and also to be aware of and value that of the other communities with whom they live. Um, let me go on to another question. Um, uh, from Kevin Webb on whether the Buddhists you featured in the film uh, just go through the rituals but don't practice Buddhism, e.g. meditation, study of the sacred texts, etc. Well, um, it's, I think it, it would be true to say that uh, a religion in general, whether Buddhist or Hindu, in Bhaktapur is very much, for most people, is very much a question of practice. It's the rituals you, you perform, the festivals you observe, the um, uh, obligations to uh, memorize, uh, commemorating the deceased and so on um, that matter more than, uh, say, study of sacred texts or practice of meditation. Um, however, uh, in, in the Buddhist community, there are priests who um, uh, certainly um, are aware of other aspects of Buddhism such as meditation and sacred texts um, and um, it, I think it's true to say that anyone who uh, it has the interest um, can learn these uh, perhaps more um, esoteric aspects 
the form of Buddhism that is practiced in uh, Bhaktapur and elsewhere in the Kathmandu Valley is certainly a very syncretic uh, form. Um, Hindus and Buddhists have been living side by side for centuries, indeed millennia, um, in the Kathmandu Valley. And so it's not surprising that um, uh, Hindus and Buddhists participate in each other's uh, festivals, uh, particularly, I have to say, musicians are quite likely to play one day for a, a, a Buddhist group and, a, and, and the next day for a Hindu group. Um, so in a way there isn't the same uh, uh, watertight division between religions that we might uh, assume uh, would, would be the case. Um, I'm just reading another couple of questions. Uh, 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 yes, question from Krishali Shingala. A question, uh, what more can be done in participatory filmmaking for the communities once the filmmakers stroke anthropologists leave the country? Um, I'm glad you liked the film, Krishali. Um, so, yeah, um, th this is a, a huge question, of course. Um, uh, and in a way, I, I, I would have thought that what, what we can do for the communities uh, is principally, once we have left the country, um, by disseminating um, the product of our work, like the films that, uh, that we make. Um, Anna, I don't know if you have any further comments on that. You've already... Um, uh, uh, perhaps partly answered that question, but would you like to come in again uh, and say something about that? Yes, of course. I mean, thank you so much. Um, I think this is a, a question that keeps reoccurring for filmmakers. How can we do our work better? How can we make it more meaningful for the communities that we, we work with? And I think now with, with COVID and obviously everyone being um, not able being to travel, this is something that is high on the agenda as well and I think the simple answer to that is is very much training people as well to um, to film themselves um, you don't have to have fancy equipment anymore these days you know our mobile phones are, are sophisticated enough to capture decent footage um, do that for posterity do that do that while you can when filmmakers are not there when exciting stuff is happening uh, where, where you know you cannot miss the opportunity to, to, to film something. And then once we have all this data stored and collected, later on we can, we can work together on editing, we can work to produce a film together. And as Richard said, I, I would again emphasize the importance of distribution. Um, I would emphasize the importance of events like this one where I can see a lot of people actually have joined us from, from Nepal as well. Um, it's, it's really refreshing to see that kind of thing happening, that you know th those events are not happening in London only for London audiences. Um, I'm not sure if I explained enough, but uh, yes, I would love to hear your contributions as well, how, what ideas people might have. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Um, do any other panelists, uh, would they like to contribute to that? Please uh, unmute yourself if, uh, if so. Um, if not, um, uh, perhaps one last question um, from Jody, uh, who noted uh, the clarinet being played. Uh, and wondered if we could uh, say a little bit about that. Um, well, yes, of course, the clarinet and also trumpets were there, Western trumpets. The clarinet is a Western orchestral instrument. So uh, what are these instruments doing uh, in, in Newa culture, you might, you might ask? Well, I'm not sure about the uh, exact history uh, of these instruments, um, but um, there are, of course, um, clarinets and uh, trumpets um, being played um, in neighbouring India in many wedding bands, for example, or similar wedding bands in uh, Nepal. Um, 
equally, there has been a long-standing association um, w w between uh, uh, Nepal and the British Army, um, uh, which uses uh, similar wind instruments uh, in army bands. Uh, this connection, of course, comes through the Gurkha Regiment. Uh, so, by whatever means, uh, Western instruments have arrived in, in Nepal. They've been there for some time. Um, the uh, particular group that we were watching uh, was a group of um, uh, high caste Buddhists, um, uh, traditionally goldsmiths and silversmiths, prosperous and uh, educated um, and um, they prefer their music to be accompanied by these uh, perhaps they feel uh, more sophisticated western instruments. Um, lower caste Buddhists, uh, the oil presser caste, um, uh, prefer to use the more traditional uh, wind instrument, uh, uh, the mwali, which is a, a shawm, an oboe type of instrument. Um, so what we're seeing here is, is the replacement or the substitution of uh, 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 Western instruments for local instruments. Um, so not as a direct result of colonization, but through, as, as a result of international influence of various kinds. Um, and um, this is surely an ongoing process. Um, I don't know if uh, any other panellists would like to join in with that discussion? Um, if not, um, then I think all that remains is for, 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 for me to thank everybody uh, for participating in this event. Um, uh, Shashi, uh, is there anything more you would like to add uh, about specifically about this event? And and uh, um, uh, I noticed that you've mentioned to um, in, in the chat that you, you, will, you will be open to uh, further discussion about uh, Newa culture for those interested. Um, so, uh, would you like to say anything uh, finally? I just want to, uh, I'm just curious to know that uh, uh, you have uh, included a uh, scene of teas uh, in the documentary, but teas uh, is that a Newa culture, Newa music, and I'm just interested why it's there, why is it there? Yes, yes, I thought you might uh, have uh, 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 an issue with that uh, because as I think I said um, the women who perform these songs at Tij and who, who celebrate Tij are not Newar women from Bhaktapur itself. Um, they are women of the Brahmin caste from Kathmandu uh, and other uh, villages around um, who like to come into Bhaktapur to the temple of Dr. Treya, which is after all a Shiva temple, and this is a Shiva festival. Um, and so um, they spend the whole morning. So uh, it, 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 it's something that happens at this same time of year. Um, but, uh, and so since we were there, of course, you can't stop filmmakers from filming something that is so obviously very beautiful and very, very fascinating. And um, so uh, I think they were a little uncertain about whether to include those shots just at the end. But I thought it was worth including them just to uh, illustrate that there is a wider context uh, of music and culture um, in, in the Kathmandu Valley alone, to say nothing of the rest of Nepal. Um, so it is just a little uh, uh, insight into a, a completely different aspect, uh, which who knows in future we might uh, we might choose to explore in more detail. Thank you. And so, can I, sorry. 
no, please. Yeah. On. Uh, it's, it's re regarding Dafa, I mean, Dafa is all over Kathmandu. Uh, there are lots of groups in uh, Kathmandu, lots of groups in uh, Patan, uh, Bhaktipur. But uh, you are always interested uh, about uh, only Bhaktipur and Dafa. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, in another life, of course, <laughs> to, uh, to 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 uh, investigate Dafa more widely, and indeed, I, I hope to do so one day. Um, but um, yeah, one has to draw a, a line somewhere to uh, you know to to, to maintain focus um, and to get more deeply into the subject. Um, so yes, uh, there are. Of course, Dafa traditions and many other Newar music traditions in Kathmandu and Lalitpur and in villages around about. Um, I, I, from what I've seen of them, they are all fascinating, equally fascinating um, uh, uh, as the uh, to the um, uh, uh, Bhaktapur traditions. But until recently, um, when Gert uh, Wegner counted them uh, back in the 1980s, there were something like 70 different Dafa groups just in Bhaktapur alone. So um, it, it is a very rich and, and diverse um, aspect of musical culture. Yeah. Thank you. So um, I, I think it's time uh, we should wrap up. Um, thank you very much to the panelists, to Amina for introducing us, uh, to Anna and, and Shashi, um, and to our technical support team in the background who, who, who didn't appear in front of the camera, but we're very grateful for their support and reassurance. Um, and of course, to everyone who helped us uh, with the uh, project. Um, which is ongoing and we hope to do more in the future. Um, so um, I have put links to the uh, uh, films in the chat. Uh, I hope you've been able to see those. Um, and um, I'll just uh, put my email address in there in case anybody wishes to contact me. Um, going in now. Um, don't hesitate to contact me if you would like to. Uh, but for now, that is the end of the event. And thank you all very, very much for attending. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you and goodbye. Bye.